All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I don't know if it feels good to speak on a mic. I don't know. It just feels like I'm official. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big deal. I got the mic, so we got to be a big deal. Anyways, thank you guys for coming. Uh, you have no idea. Uh, I'm so grateful and, and happy to have one of my old friends and, and an athlete and student and uh, uh, mate uh, join me today. This is a, a, an amazing event. You know what I was thinking about? Somebody asked me, what are, you, what are you doing this for? And I said, now think about this for a second. Like, um, if the best, the, the best chef in the world uh, is opening a restaurant down the street, right? The best chef in the world. Like the world champion of chefs. Like a Michelin star <laughs> chef, right? Like, no, not, not a world champion. Nine times world champion of chefs. is opening a restaurant down the street. Uh, what do you think are the chances of getting a table at that restaurant? Not much. I mean, you're not going to get a table for months, right? Now, let's, okay, forget the chefs. Like, imagine, like, the world champion plumber. Like, you know that there's a world champion plumber that is around, and, and you get a leak in your house, a, a pipe burst. What do you think the chances are to get that world champion plumber come through your pipe? No, it's busy. The guy is busy. It's not gonna fix your pipe. He's got like big pipes to fix. Look like <laughs> multi-million dollar pipes to fix, right? Oh yeah, well, I'll give you one more. How about the world champion teacher? Like this teacher, not the world champion, the nine times world champion teacher is teaching of this is teaching this class at the school. What are the chances for you to get in that class? To for him to to, to teach you something like personally? Slim. Slim to none. Well guess what? That's why I said that we have a and I don't want to use uh, you know profanities, but we have the world champ, not once, not twice. Like nine times, like nine times world champion, the best in the world, Robert Abara. Well, thank you so much, Coach. Lee. Is it working? Okay, I'm feel official too now. Talk on the mic, you know. I like that too. I'm a good talker, guys. You know, as I get loose here, I'm gonna tell you guys some stories. But uh, thank you so much, Coach. It's been a minute, you know, since we got together. Like I walk here, you know, I got glimpses of like, uh, you know, memories of dropping a lot of sweat here. You know, like I come here first time, struggle, and then improve a lot. And then, uh, you know, Liu is kind enough to like uh, talk about the accomplishment of being um, nine times world champion. And as I spoke to him here, right when I got here, be world champion is not that hard, you know. It was not that hard to be honest with you guys because I have passion. I have goals, you know, I love what I was doing and then um, and I put it work, you know, I gave everything I had it, 100% all the time, all in, never, you know, never cheat one day, never cheat myself and then, you know, like, uh, that was actually, you know, the easy part of my life, when I step on the mat, hit the floor stage, you know, forgot about everything and then I just perform, you know. The journey, you know, to get there, what is actually, what is the beauty about it? You know, the struggles, the setbacks, have to overcome all of this, you know. So thank you, coach. I'm excited to talk to you because we have a lot in common. And then, uh, you know, share with you guys a little bit my story. I'm not special, I can tell you guys that. You know, I just someone that uh, had a vision, had a dream, and then did everything in my, in my power to accomplish. Thank you, guys. Wow. I don't know, it's, uh, it wasn't hard. It wasn't hard to win the world championship. Well, you guys should try it. <laughs> See if it's hard. Uh, listen, it's a world champion. Like, it's a world champion. Like, not once, twice. Uh, but I always want to, I put myself in somebody else's shoes, so, and I ask you, oh, well, um, were you ever afraid? Well, yes, every single time, 
you know, I was afraid to fail because, you know, like uh, I think being afraid, have pressure, that would help me accomplish my goals. Sometimes the people, they put people down, but in my case, the fear, you know, like uh, the anxiety to go there and then not perform well, it helped me and somehow. So, 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 so being afraid is good? Uh, well, I think everybody's different, you know, but it's, it's sometimes, you know, when I see people talking about not being afraid, being so tough, being this and that, you know, like I feel that is unrealistic, you know, I feel that is a lie that people just want to be different. They don't want to be like everybody else. Like I said, and then I'm going to keep knocking on this door. I'm just like everyone and I like to speak reality, you know. I'm afraid. I'm afraid every day when I wake up. I'm afraid, you know. I'm afraid to. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of like, you know, like. A, more, no, no, I want to. No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so like, I wanted you to walk us through like one of the situation when you were afraid and what what was this? What did you do to overcome that? Like for example, you know, I was in this final and I was afraid of whatever the things that you went through and how did you deal with that? I would we'd like to know that. You know, coach. Let me tell you something. When you put out in, you know, like when you give your best, you give 100%, you know, like you're afraid of fail. It's very easy to not be afraid of fail when you're not putting the work, you know? If you go and then you're like, oh, I wanna win the world championship, and then you're not doing what you're supposed to be done to win the world championship, you're not gonna be afraid. It's so easy. Every, the, first, the first difficulty that you have you can nearly quit and then not feel bad about yourself. But now, you know, like you put everything, every drip of sweat, you know, you, you like, you give everything you have, you, you know, like you forgot about, you just like see a little light on the end of the tunnel, okay? And then now, you're not even sure that it's a light or if you're just tripping on your head, you're gonna be afraid. <laughs> Listen, I'm afraid. I know there's fears all the time, but like regular people, I, I think I'm a regular guy. Um, how do I deal with fear? Like, what would you say to someone that is afraid of of anything? I guess the success of uh, afraid of uh, taking action. What would you say to that guy? If you were in his corner to get him through it, what would, what, would, what would that be? Well, you know, I learned something back in the day with my father. That's like a long time ago. You have a fear, go with fear. You know, obviously, eventually in life, you begin to learn what does that mean? That means that the fear is just a state of mind. It's something that is in your brain, you know, like that is constantly, you know, if you're thinking about it, if you're constantly thinking about it, you know, I have been through so much on the past few months, and then every day I have fear, right? So much. And then things that I did experience never in my life. You know, like things that if I sit down with someone that was experienced, I would think the person was soft. You know what I mean? Because I was not knowing how to do it. The fears that I have in the past, you know, like it was the fears that I believe that is you know, like something that uh, it was not real. It's, uh, you know, like being a fear of, like being afraid of like a fail is not real. You know what I mean? It's, it's, just, it's just a thinking, it's a, it's a negative thing that we put in our head. And then, you know, like we keep thinking over, over, over again. We overthink and then we cannot even start. That's when they come procrastination. You know what I mean? Like you can't make things happen when you're afraid. And then that, that fear is actually hold you down. But when you use that fear on your favor, that's when you see the beauty. I just like, I have the fear. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm, I'm like I was scared to lose. Oh my God, I can't lose. What did I did with that? I trained so much, so much, so much that they gave me confidence. And then now I'm not afraid no more. I go there, I look on across the mats. People ask me like, hey, you're gonna fight this guy. What do you see? I see a person without the head. Without the head? Yes. You know, because I don't want a name. You're fighting this guy, he's a big guy, this and that. I don't see heads, I don't see names. 
You know what I mean? I see myself going there and performing. So that fear that I have, you know what I mean? Being afraid, they help me push, push. But being afraid is actually something that, like you said, you want to be afraid, so to speak, because it's something that's helping you push harder, maybe? It did help me push harder. And then now that I was afraid, like in the past few months, about something that is also on my mind, you know what I mean? They helped me grow as well. Everything in life has two sides. That is a positive and negative, right? Like everybody here, all you guys probably experience right now something positive and something negative. I guarantee you guys, that's happened on a daily basis, right? So now we have a choice. On the negative, that is also a side of positive. And then on the positive, that is also a side of negative. So what you choose? You know, you choose the black wolf or the white wolf. I don't know if you guys know about this story, you know. But anyways, I just choose the negative, find a positive. On the positive, keep positive, you know. So negative is strong, guys. A negative, uh, a negative thought is a thought in steroids, in a lot of steroids. It's so strong, so big, you know what I mean? That is like, it just make you scared. You know what I mean? Like now, when you have a positive thoughts, it's like, it's so small. It's so hard to think positive on a daily basis. You see everything and then I'm talking about when you actually don't know how to use. And then I'm not gonna tell you guys like, oh, have you ever not experienced that? I just experienced, I'm just experienced right now. I'm just experienced right now. You know, I'm being here to talk to you guys, but in the back of my head, I'm afraid about something. You know what I mean? But now, Am I gonna be using this as a positive or a ne negative? That's my choice, you know? It's what we choose to do with the fear. It's not what the fear do in the negative way. I can choose positive, negative. I don't know if that makes sense for you guys, but that's the way that I think, you know? Obviously, we are all different. That's the beauty of the world. Sometimes in my life, at some point of my life, I wanna make people like me. And then my wife, she told me one day, my wife, you know, like sometimes you don't listen to your wife, right? And then she told me like one day, hey, listen, they're not gonna be like you. Forget about it, you know? I'm like, why not? It's their way. And then eventually I see, like I, like, I like when I was coaching people, you know, students, and then, you know, like, I'm like, how they don't hear, like, for example, right now, I don't coach people no more because um, they don't wanna pay the price. The price is expensive. The price? <laughs> My friend. <laughs> The price should be nine times world champion. Exactly, it's not money. It's, it's not, not money. Exactly. And money can't buy that. You know what I mean? And money can Money cannot buy art. It cannot, you know what I mean? Homer, you talk about something that you're afraid of, something that happened recently. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wasn't aware until somebody told me, uh, I was, this guy's the, the top of the world, right? The toughest guy. Safe, I can safely say that was the toughest guy in life, the baddest guy on the planet. He all of a sudden um, had to deal with something very, very scary and seriously. Can you tell us more about that? Well, I'm not going to talk much about this, you know, but like, I'm, you know, like it's important because honestly, until that time, until that time happened, I only think when I see people, I think they soft. I judge people. Unfortunately, and then that's not good, you know, because we never, never, never know what the person is going through, right? So when you've been put in a situation that you become mentally, physically, and spiritual weak, you know, <laughs> that's the big learn. That's when you like, well, now I understand those people, you know? So I'm glad that I actually took my jacket off because I begin to sweat. <laughs> Well, you know, like, uh, imagine this, guys. Uh, I got in a point of my life that I go like this. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, don't, don't get me wrong, you know, like, but like sometimes my wife, she's look on the Instagram, like we have some time off, you know, and she's looking on, um, you know, like clothes, shoes. Oh, you got time off, right? Yeah, like, exactly. She's very busy, you know. She works a lot, you know. She barely will go on in Instagram because she cannot even reply in the message, you know. 
She has no time. She's actually that one that works hard. I'm just with crazy ideas and then she makes things happen. Uh, and then, you know, like I got in a point of my life, I don't look on clothes, no more clothes doesn't, you know, doesn't fulfill me like watch and then, you know, brand. It's it was something big, like helicopters, yachts, uh, airplanes, you know, and then I'll tell her and then she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I don't know. I think I can do anything. I think I can accomplish anything, you know. And then guess what? I was, I was doing that. You know what I mean? I was going on that direction. But as I accomplished something, I began to feel that it was not fulfilled. You know, like we in championships, nine. If you ask me, are you happy? Are you fulfilled that? No. You know, anyways, I was on top of the world. I was in the best shape of my life, even without compete. I would go training with the current world champions, current uh, the best in the world. Then I would smash them. You know what I mean? I will travel every single week into a different country. You know, I'm open business in like almost every month. You know what I mean? I'm in Europe, like in a nice place, drink wine and then finish a seminar too. And then I just woke up with a back pain, you know, like a pain in my low back. And then I'm like, yeah, that's what I did, you know? Maybe I trained too much, you know, maybe I'm doing too much. Well, two days later, I'm in the hospital and then I have a, you know, a very dangerous infection on my blood, my blood. You know, that went travel to my low back, could have been traveled to my heart. And then, you know, you know, I'm not going to tell everything, but I was in a hospital in Spain, speak no, no language, what they speaking. I didn't understand what I was going through. A lot of things in my mind. I'm there for like almost a month, you know, like thinking about my family, my daughters. Am I going to, am I, this is it? I'm going to be done. Who's going to take care of my family? You know, like uh, I'm just broke. I just broke you know, mentally, spiritually, you know, like uh, I was just, you know, one day I'm on the top of the world and one day I don't know if I'm going to leave, you know. So that's what I went through. And then, you know, like all these past months feeling weak, you know, especially physically. Imagine, you know, like guys, seriously, I go train with uh, anyone in Jiu Jitsu. Imagine it's 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 I make it easy. You know what I mean? I'm four, I'm four years old, you know, and then I barely can find someone that can do anything to me. You know, they can score a point. I can actually let them do it. And then one day I can barely walk here to that chair. You know what I mean? So the world just drop on top of me. And then, uh, you know, that's it. What did you have to do to, um, what was the lesson? What was the lesson? Well, you know, like, it's crazy, right? Because when you, when you invite me to come here, you know, like, I'm a belief that uh, the signs is always happen on the front of us, right? It's, it's like, so I don't know if what, you, what you guys believe in God or whatever you guys believe, but when we ask for something, whatever you ask, you get it. You get it. You just, sometimes it's hard to see it. Oh, be careful what you ask for. Yeah, be careful what you ask for. You know, sometimes it's hard to see it. Almost people can show in the front of you. So my wife has been telling me, you know, like it, it's, it's hard to let it go. Being an athlete, you know, I don't know if you're gonna have a time to get through that when I met you, but being an athlete and then let it go is something that's not easy. You know what I mean? It's like you identify with this super, super hero uh, person that nothing can break you. And then you the strongest and then the tougher, the, the tougher, uh, toughest, person in the world, you feel, invincible. you feel invincible until you find out you're not. And then now, you know, like as I'm, you know, like learning and then I'm coming back to the real life after months and months, six months, basically what that happened, being home, you know what I mean? Lost all my muscles, you know, I was, I was, I was nearly you like a- on top of the world. <laughs> Nobody can, Feeling invisible, all of a sudden you can walk. Yeah. Exactly. You know, like uh, it's 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 something that. Uh, and then to be honest with you, I never thought, I never feel sorry for myself. You know, I never ask like, oh my God, what this happened to me? No, I absorb. This has happened. This is it. This is a new fight. This is life. Yeah. So, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> Man, I have been through so much stuff. So many daily battles inside my mind, you know? It's basically 
sometimes I have a friend over, which is, you know, he's a fan of him, one of my friends, one of my fighters, Benio Darush. And he told, I told him my story and he told me, you basically, you wrestling all the time. You know, basically there is a, like I told about the negative and positive and then you wrestle and then you wrestle and then you don't stop to wrestle. You're tired, you know, and then I was tired. I was just, you know, like, uh, well, but every day, you know, I have a support of my family and my wife is there with me and my kids and then, but I, I thought about many, many, many days. Is this is it? I don't want to be like that. You know what I mean? Like this, I don't want to be like this. Just yeah. like this, what is that? What do you mean like this? The way that I was, you know, like, like weak, you know, like uh, weak, and then it does so not. What be. did you do? At what point you stop? You start fighting back? No, I, I was fighting back since the beginning. I never, I never gave up. You How know? do you fight back against something like that? Well, you just kind of you gotta find answers. You know, like uh, I, I did. You find God. I find God. You know what I mean. I look for God, and then um, you know, like I. That's something that helps you. It did help me. You know, I'm still looking. You know, I'm not a hundred. I'm not gonna tell you like oh, I'm a hundred percent. You know, like, but I have people telling me and showing me. You know, the ways. I, I won't speak about that much because. I'm not quite sure, and then I'm not speak. I'm not. I'm not ever going to speak something that I'm not sure about it. You know, I'm not going to share with you guys here. I felt that God came and touched me, and then I become better because oh, if, it, if it did, you know, say, I, no, I mean, exactly. If that happened, I will tell you guys. You know what I mean? It would happen. It, it, it not like that. You know, like 100 percent. But I'm feeling that. I feel something. I feel something. You know, I feel that. I feel that basically. You know, God put me there to show me that I'm much bigger than that. I'm much bigger than an airplane and a yacht and then a big house or a, a big account with a lot of money, you know. Bigger than that, nine times more. Bigger than, bigger than, much bigger. My, my job here what is on job? this world is not about me. What is it? It's about people. It's, it's about something, it's about this. Maybe I share something here with you guys today. And then, you know, maybe you guys going through something about today. Like you said, I don't care about you have five people here, 10 people, two people, one people. If I'm here today, there's a reason for me to be here. You know, like I was saying, you invite me. There is people that I don't even know telling me like, man, you have a purpose here that is much bigger than you know, that you think. You know, and then um, I'm searching. Right now, I'm searching. I'm searching for this big purpose, you know, like uh, every day I'm reading. I'm like, like when I was in my house recovering, I had to stay with a 24 hours IV in my, in my arm for like uh, eight weeks. And then I'm walking on my house. I think at some point I was walking 10,000 steps in, in my backyard a day. And then when I'm walking, I'm thinking, I'm searching, you know what I mean? I'm searching for answers. I'm searching for like, what? What do you want from me? You know what I mean? Because, like I said, you know, like, uh, if I was going through that, I was a chosen one. We have to understand. What I understand is, like, you being chosen for something much bigger than you. And you're still looking for that. I'm looking for It's so interesting because uh, <laughs> I was, one time, I was, uh, I think it was uh, about 10 years ago, I went to your dojo, and I look at this guy and I said to myself, what is up? What is up with this guy? Why is something about him? And I, you know, it's like, it's not like he's, he's got the greatest, I don't want to sell because I'm not far better than he is, but he, it's not like he's, he has a, his English is not that, so it's not people to like, he speaks well, you know, English. Okay, that's not, I don't need it. So, it's not, but it's not, so what is about him? What else, I was looking at, I was actually sitting back and trying to see what is about him, and that's why I come out with this quote, actually, that is in the staircase, and it says, you follow the one who believes in himself, you hire the one who believes in his work, and then listen to the one who believes in you. And I, I realized that that's him, that's him. It's a, so it's, um, uh, He's got, he's got this gift, it's a gift, 
and he doesn't have to do much with it. He just have to be himself. And, and uh, but I want to tell him a tell him a story. A story. Uh, I want to change gears a little bit. We one time I, I was training a hobo, and it's, this guy doesn't stay still. Doesn't it? If you try if you try to talk to him, it, you need to have him moving so he can listen. So he comes in. is is very beaten down. He's tight. His muscles are tight. He's tired. He's limping, and he's walking in. And I said, oh shit, he's, he's hurt. And that's the, the worst thing that I, you want in an athlete, to be hurt, to be injured. So I said, okay, I gotta keep him moving. So I put him on the bike and I said, oh, all right, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, so he's moving, he's doing the bike. Because I knew he couldn't run because he's hurt, he's hurting. His hamstring is hurting. So I said, okay, uh, uh, if I ask you to do 10 more push-ups, knowing that those push-ups will bring you closer to the gold medal, would you do them? Yes, coach, of course I would do it. It's, 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 you're training for the world championships. All right, so if I ask you to run ten more, another mile, knowing that that mile will bring you closer to your goal, would you run it? Of course, coach, of course, I, I'll do anything. All right, so you know, if, if I tell you anything, if I tell you something, you trust me that, that whatever I'm saying, I have you do will bring you closer to your goal medal, right? Yes, coach. Well, I want you to do nothing for the next 10 days. He looks at me like, excuse me? I want you to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> but coach, that's hard. And I said, well, who said that being a world champion is easy? I said, that's what you need to do. Do nothing. And on top of that, I want you to eat a big juicy burger and a french fry and uh, be done with it. Well, coach, I won't do anything for the next 10 days, but I won't eat the burger. Uh, and he stayed, actually, listen, he's, he did nothing for 10 days, he became a world champion. So let's give it up for that. Yeah. Oh, well, I want to ask you something now, going back to you. Um, you're a great follower, really. I mean, and I think to be a great leader, you have to be a master follower. Would you agree with that? One hundred percent. You agree with this. You know, if you you know, like uh, you need to some point of your life be mentor, have someone that you believe, and this person is gonna tell you things that is gonna bring you close to your goals. Like sometimes, just us. You know, like we're weak. We have to bring people on a cycle, they're gonna push us. Can you do it on your own? No. No. That is, uh, I thought so before that you could, but you can do a lot of things on your own, but not become the best. And not great things. Not great things. Not high level things. You know what I mean? I'm always looking for people to help me accomplish my goals because I know I have big goals, you know, and I need people. I, you know, like, I, I didn't went to school, you know what I mean? I barely speak English. Do you think that I can read a contract? No. You know, agreement? No. You know what I mean? But I make things happen. You know, I make actions. I believe people. I, you know, I, like you said, you know, like, I, I walk here. You're my strength conditioning coach. I begin to know you. I'm like, man, this guy is not even, he's not only a strength conditioning coach, you know what I mean? He's helped me actually believe myself even more. So then you tell me, you know, that I have to rest, even if it's the, the hardest thing for me to do it, then, you know, I'll do it. You need to be, to be a leader, you need to be a good follower. Uh, one more thing, I mean, another thing. Uh, a lot of people have this, this struggle with belief, self-belief. Like, do you always believe that you're good enough? Do you always say, I'm good enough, I'm, I'm, I deserve this? Or maybe not? Not all the time. You know, sometimes I, no, you don't deserve that. Yeah. So even if you won't champion, you still don't think you're good enough? No. Wow. So, so what do you do with that? Because we all struggle with that. I mean, the common man. I mean, if a world champion doesn't think it's good enough, what do you think the regular people? So what, how, what, how do you overcome that? Well, I always think there's a room to improve. 
you know, like, uh, I believe when you begin to think that, oh, I'm good enough, then, you know, you're basically on a straight line, you know, and then there's no growth. You don't grow in a straight line. You just keep the same, you can go down, you know, like, uh, the growth is going on. You know, like, it's the graph of growth is not straight line. I don't want to be in a straight line, anyways. So, think that you're good enough. Like, for example, if I go to the World Championship, I'm driving back home with my wife, and she's like, why are you not ahead? I lost the last one. You know, because in the World Championship, they have like... Basically, two tournaments, you know, in Jiu-Jitsu. They have the weight class, which you compete like uh, on your weight class. And then when I was competing, I was weighing, you know, my prime like 100, like actually the weight that I'm right now, 185 pounds, you know. And then uh, that's my weight of that I compete my whole life. And then that's the absolute, which is like any weight class. You compete against like a guy that is... 250, 300, doesn't matter, you know? So then, you know, like, I don't want, you know, like, I did want to win double gold, but I also want to finish everybody. Finish is like submit everybody, make everybody tap, right? Like a knockout burger. Yeah. So I'll go and then I'll win my weight class and then I'll lose to this guy. He was actually on my podcast last week, you know, in my gym teaching. And then I will lose to him on the final and then I'll drive home in my last match on the tournament, I lost. Oh, but you won 10, 10 mats, but I lost the last. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's like, be a winner. <laughs> you know, obviously guys, I'm not a, no, yes I am, I'm a solo a loser, you know, uh, but you have to, it's part of the game, right? But it's not nice to, you know, like uh, reach on the highest level and then you lose the last one, you know, like uh, that means that I have to improve. I'm not good enough. And then sometimes my wife will tell me, you have so much ego, oh, just fight me. And then eventually I think she begins to understand. And then this haunt me for a long time. You know, like when you have something that haunts you in your life, you know, like something in the past. Oh my God, why we have that? But we all do. And this thing haunt me like, you never won the absolute. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. What is about all this nine times world champion? You never have one gold. You focus on the one you didn't get. Exactly. Nine, one. nine you, that you got. I was doing what? I was not looking on the positive. I was focused on the negative. But, you know, like and at some point I let it go. You know, then not be good enough. That means like, it, just to, you know, to guys understand my point of view. It's not like, it's not like I'm not good. En- I'm not good enough person that brings me down. No, no, not like that. Not being good enough is like this. Okay, I did, you know, like, uh, I, you know, I compete, I won, but like, I made a mistake here. I need to get better on this. You know, I'm just talking about- perfect. Exactly, not perfect, you know? Not, sometimes like, not, not being good enough, maybe you think like, that you bring yourself down. I'm not bring myself down, you know what I mean? Like, not that. I'm actually, no, I wanna grow, you know? I wanna get better. You know, like so uh, you use that if if you go through something like that and you think like I'm, I just don't feel like I'm good enough. You use you use that for means to get better. Yeah. How about discipline? How about discipline? Do you have <laughs> discipline? Am I disciplined, I, I, I see your Instagram story, and you're like, <laughs> what you eat is like way too perfect. Do you even enjoy your food? I, it sounds terrible what you're eating. Terrible. <laughs> Well, like, when was the last time you had a, fa- a basket of fries and cheese? That's probably like six months ago. Six, six months ago, okay, great. So, you know what they say, uh, homo, you gotta live a little. Do you even, are you, do you even live? Is well, living what you, you, you whatever you do, you, you call that living? Well, huh? I, I, yeah, I wake, know, I, I, I wake up. I wake up. So no, so let's, these people, they like, people <laughs> struggle. They, they have a hard time. But, so um, do you ever wake up in the morning and say, ah, I don't want to get up. It's too early. Ah, I don't, I'm tired. Is my, ah. is, do you ever do that? Is my daughter is here? Bella? Yeah. Where is Bella? Uh, she's not here. I'm going to ask her what her dad is so, so Do you wake up in the morning and say, I don't want to get up. I just want to stay in bed. I'm, I want to be lazy. No. No? No. Why? What do you mean, no? No. Okay, so you know, like, uh, it's, uh, you know, like, uh, like sometimes, you know. Um, like a lazy day. Do you have a lazy day? Like, you, do, you, do you sleep in the pajamas? 
I do. Hey, so do, do you ever like not taking a take your pajamas off and just like, say I'm not gonna get out of bed today? No, I wake up. And then, I wake up. I get off the bed as soon as my eyes open, and then sometimes <laughs> I don't want to be on the cold shower, and I then remember, and then I just do it. Yes. Uh, are your dad is build what? Different. <laughs> your dad is build what? Different. Well, one day, one day she told me that, you know, her mom was talking about this and then she just said, Mom, Dad is built different. You know, like, uh, okay. thank you, Belle, you can go sit. <laughs> dad is built We built different. I love it. You know, I don't, you know, like, I don't come on an easy background, which is, I don't think that you need to come on a hard background to succeed. That has nothing to do with that. You can come up, like, I know I have partners that they reach. And then they, the hardest work that I know, and then they've been reaching for like a generations. That has nothing to do with them. But like, I, you know, Leo, I change like for a point of my life. Like for example, when this happened to me, uh, I was living, you know what I mean? I was traveling, I was enjoying all my trips. I was enjoying a glass of wine, enjoy a- Eating fries. Getting fries, you know, like I was doing them, you know, like, uh, and then all of this happened to me. And then uh, right now, I'm just on the process is like, maybe that's not me. You know, like, yes, I'm being six months. I think uh, I had to go to Mexico for like a work trip and then my family go to me. And then that was the first time in six months that I ate outside my house. I don't go to restaurants, you know this what I mean? This guy eats like a slice avocado with uh, almonds and uh, chicken breast. I mean, really, this is, <laughs> I watch it this Instagram, it's completely boring. I'm like, live and live and live. Well, well, is it living? Tell me, people are gonna tell you like you're weird. You're not living. This is not life. What is life? Do you like your food? I like my food. I, Why you know, do you like your food? It's so boring. It, it is, you know, like, uh, it is boring for so many people, man. And then I got this my whole life, you know. I, 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 I trust me, people, you know, like when I was growing up and then, uh, you know, like I was training for competition and then I don't eat bad food. I wake up the same time every day. I do the same thing every day. My routine is the same. Boring. Yeah. And then people will say that, you know, that's boring. You're losing your yacht, you know, like you don't enjoy. Man. But guess what? I love it. The dog said the same you know, thing. It's weird. Like, you're not living life, or well, you're missing out on some fries and uh, Pepsi Cola. But imagine a rocket. You know, that was me. If I tell, if I go back now, and then uh, I sit down with people, and then we talk about accomplishments, they'll be in shame. Unfortunately, you know, like I made choice, hard ones, hard choice. That's not for everyone. Tell me one choice, hard choice that you made that was hard for you. What was, name one. 100% all the time, lock in, all in, discipline, nothing, nothing, nothing can stop my mind and change my goal. So if you feel like you want something because it's craving, or whatever, if it's just you want it, right? Uh, you you act like stop. This is not. How do you do that? I mean, most people can't uh, do it. No, right you, now, right now no, it's like. How do you? What is discipline to you? I think discipline to me is do what most of the people don't want to do it. <laughs> you know, like discipline. It's basic like this. What I think is discipline. You set a goal, okay, and then you write. Write. Uh, I write. What? This guy opens his eyes in the morning and gets up. That's it. So, listen. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, you know, I make my goals. I write it down, you know. I write down my, my routine. And then I just do what I but plan to do it. Don't you have the good Romulo and the bad Romulo? And the bad Romulo say, yeah, sit in bed. Don't worry, I got some more. And the good Romulo, hey, I got to get up. I got to go wash your face with cold water. Wake up, wake up. Nah, sit. No, you have to, well, most people have that. Well, sometimes I think the bad hormone is the one right now. The one what? The one right now. Right now? Yeah. You're the bad one? Yeah. How is that? The bad one is the one that they don't want to cheat. They don't want to 
you know, eat the bad food, don't take the cold shower, don't work out, don't accomplish goals. That's the good one. The bad one, it's me. Because you gotta be bad to do those things. Oh, <laughs> you gotta be bad. Yeah. Gotta be bad you gotta be bad. For the bad one. <laughs> oh. Uh, this guy, that guy's real chill. Nine, nine, why nine? Why did you stop like four? What was, what, what, when you get to four, what is that? I got five more in me. What, what, what was that enough? Well, was four not enough? You know, like nine times because like, just to explain to you guys, you know, they have the base belts, you know, like when you're competing to get in a black belt, black belts is the professional league, you know. So then I won four. Until I got to the black belt. And then when I got to the black belt, I won five, which is also, I have many, many silver medals, which I don't like to talk about them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I was in the world championship in a black belt finals, I think. Uh, I think I was in, um, I don't know, 16 times. And then I have five gold medals. So, like, so listen, look how much that I actually fail. I have only five, but I have 17 finals. So, so failing is good. It's part of the growth, you know, because the true growth happens. We're afraid of to fail. Well, well, I don't want to fail. We don't want to fail. What are you going to tell us? Fail? Well, if you don't want to fail, you're not going to try it, you know. So if you, you can be afraid to fail and then try it and then give your best and then accomplish, you're going to fail. It's, it's part of the game. Like, for example, I deal with the athletes for like, for many years, like guys that come in, I want to be like you, right? And then uh, I watch them. I watch people come from all, all kinds of backgrounds, come and then they want to be like me. So then I see there's a setback, quit. Okay, there's a setback, quit. Okay, another guy, there's a setback, quit. And another guy, have a setback, quit. So soon as they have setback, they quit. Yes, and then now I see, have a setback, keep going. Have another have setback, keep going. Have another setback, keep, keep going. going. Have a big setback, keep going. Keep going. And then, boom, pass the world. Wow, wow, that, that, Do you know that what I mean? Chills. It's, it's basically, it's the ones that refuse to quit, the ones that accomplish the big things, you know? Don't ever quit. Yeah. Um, oh, anything hard for you? Like, what's hard for you? Be me right now. Is it hard being you? Yes. What? Right now, yeah. Because what's, what's, it's, I'm like in a part of like a transformation that I don't, that I lost the control. I'm a controlled person, you know? Like, freak. It's a freak. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm a control, like, I like to, That's kind of boring. Yeah. <laughs> like, for example, when I compete, you know, like, I like to dictate the rhythm, you know what I mean? Like, I like to <laughs> push the pace, you know, like, get in my positions, get in my, in, in my strength, you know, like, I like to control the pace. Control. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. what I've been through, I lost the control of everything, you know what I mean? So, right now, I'm, in the middle of like a reconstruction. I don't even know who I am right now. I don't know. When do you know who you are? Well, you no, no unfortunately not. You know, like, uh, well, let's talk about this. Imagine the home of Baha. Imagine a mountain, okay? I'm on the top of the mountain, the top. Like, it's, it's nice. beautiful. The sunrise is beautiful. The sunset is beautiful. Every, is everything is excited there. But it's very tiny. Okay, you can you need to walk like very carefully to not fall because if you fall, it's done. I was sprinting on top of the mountain. I was going like hundred and hundred, like I don't even there is a imagine it's sonic if you have kids you know that was sonic on top of the mountain, like that was you. That's me. Then I fall. You fall off the mountain. But the thing is, I fall, then there was a little bushes there, then they hold me. Hold I you. broke. I broke everything, you know. Imagine that you broke everything, you your broke, whole body. Down. Yes. And then now, you know, you, you fall, pop, pop, after, yeah. one after bush, one after bush, then you down the mountain now. Okay? But down the mountain now, all broke. 
then you have to look him up and climb again. Where which is where are you? I don't know. Where which is I, I I climb the mountain many times in my life, many times, but I have never fall that hard. That hard. Exactly. Now I have to climb again. I'm slowly, and then when you climb again, you know you basically you're doing reconstruction yourself. You are adapting. Now I can reach too high because of this. Now I can put my leg there because my, my leg is broke. You have to find new roads. So basically, that home Ulubahal that we're talking about is gone. So who is this guy now? It's, it's, no, no. it's rebuilding. Rebuilding. So let me ask you something. <laughs> no, no, this is fascinating. So um, you think uh, people look at you, what, especially if they look at Instagram, it's, uh, it's, it's completely indestructible. So you telling us that people like you, nine times world champion, you have a couple of gyms, beautiful family. You telling us that you still struggle. People like you struggle. All the time. You have, you know, like that is, <laughs> the thing is, you know, like uh, Instagram, social media, it's fake. 99% of the time. I can nearly throw this water in my head right now, go on the trade mill. Imagine that I leave the trade mill running since the morning. And then now it's gonna show that it is like, I don't know how many miles. 12 hours and 12, miles. Exactly. Yeah, then I throw some water in my head. And you then I make that. an Instagram video. And then I tell people that I've been running since the morning. 99% of the people believe me. So, Oh, you know, because a lot, we, we're, everybody struggles, we all struggle. So what would you say to these people, like, who struggle, whether we lose weight, and sometimes we don't like the way we look, that like body image, um, our body issues, but, you know, um, struggles. Um, we don't like uh, the things about ourselves that we don't like. So we struggle. And we look at people like you, and we envy you because you, you look good, you you look invisible, you might have world champion, and you struggle. So what would you say to us, people like us, that we struggle, that we're not world champions, to, to, to keep going? Well, first of all, coach, I think we are all the same. I'm, I'm honest, you know. Like, like I said, you know, like I can guarantee here you guys do things that I don't know how to do it. And you guys are much better in things that I have no idea how to do it. So believe that when it says that. You know, right. it's, and I mean it, you know what I mean? Like, like I said, I have, you know, like, uh, for example, I, to, if I need to put some uh, thing in my house, was it called like a frame? I need to pay someone to do it because I don't know how to do it. I don't, and then I don't want to learn how to do it too. That is things that is not important for me, right? But that doesn't make me like weak or something like that. I think when people struggle, they always looking for people to bring uh, people no, to things to bring them down. Like for example, if I'm struggling with something and then I cannot put a frame, or oh, I'm, I'm I'm I cannot even put a frame. You're not gonna have to put a frame. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's just get worse and worse, you know. Like, but I'm just like everybody else. I struggle. Like like I said, I'm struggling right now. You know, like right now, I'm talking to you guys here that it stinks on the back of my head. You know, so, like, uh, which is which is okay, but I just need to learn how to do it and to control it. You know, we have to learn how to control. If you can't control it yourself with yourself, you have to find help. You know, like, and then it's okay. So ask for help. You ask for help. Like, like I said, you know, Instagram, all of this is a fake. It's lie. You know what I mean? People, yeah, I can see. Like, I don't. You know, like, I could. I could make tons of money by lying on Instagram, but I, I, I refuse to do that. You know what I mean? Because I want to be real. I want to come here, talk to you guys, and then you guys feel my heart. You know what I mean? They ask me like if like I know what Leo talking want to talk about. No, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to know. I want to be surprised and give the answer as my heart tells me right on time. Like right now, right now. You ask me ask me something. I answer right now. But. You know, as I drive here, I'm some, I, I, sometimes I lost the focus. I'm driving and then I begin to like, thinking about all the stuff that have nothing to do with this, which is part of 
what I'm going through right now. And then I'm like, wait a minute, you know, like you're gonna do something great now. You know, like it's gonna be amazing. But doesn't matter, I'm nine times world champion. Oh, uh, you know, like I came from Brazil, I accomplished this, I accomplished that. It doesn't matter, I'm just like everybody else. And then- That feels good, that feels good, the world champ to say that it's, it's just like everybody else, right? I mean, I feel good about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. All right, well, so now, what do you do for fun? Do you have fun? So it doesn't seem like uh, uh, your food is not fun. <laughs> you wake up in the morning and you're not trying to, do you hear the snooze? You don't hear the snooze. You I don't have alarm. You don't have alarm? No. So what time you wake up? No, whenever I want to wake up, I wake up, open my eyes. If I want to wake up 5 a.m., I wake up. I don't know if it's alarm. Sleep very low, like a, what's it called? Like a light sleep. Light sleep. Yeah. But like, I don't use alarm. Do you watch any shows on there? Like, no. Like, like, like shows? No. <laughs> I love this. Guy. It's, 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 this, it's, this guy's the real shit. No. I'm telling you, this, this is not messing around. This guy is like, it, it's, it, it, this, can, can somebody become disciplined? Okay, so if somebody is not disciplined, can he become disciplined? Yeah. How? Yeah. Find something you're passionate about it. Passion. I'm not, like I said, I'm not disciplined for everything. I'm, you well, know. Tell us, tell us something that you're not disciplined. What, well, what is it? Well, if you, can tell if you tell me like, hey, homo, we're going to go out for dinner tonight. I don't want to go. <laughs> He's calling that not discipline. Right? We don't want to go. I want, I want to eat my carrot and avocado tonight. I want to eat lunch. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But anyways, no, it, it's like, like, honestly, you're talking about right now. If I'm talking about right now, yes, I'm not doing anything for fun. I'm not having fun right now. You know, not right now, I mean, being here. <laughs> oh, great. You know what? You know, yeah. I, I, I like, have to, I have to, I'm right, gonna, right now in my life, you I'm know? Say, you <laughs> Not right now, guys. I love this, being here, like, actually, being here right now talking, oh my, this is actually been amazing. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I swear, because it's the dopamine, you know? Like, I'm, look, I'm sweating. Oh, look, at look, at my, look at my, look at my armpits here. I told, I told my wife, I said, okay, give me this, take the jack off for me. I'm beginning to get hot. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I love it. This is I love it. What I'm saying is like right now when everything that happened, yes, I'm not I'm not happy. You know what I, I mean? Understand. You know, I, I swear I understand what he says because it I don't I, what is fun. You know, I, I completely it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird, strange way that what's fun, it's fun, it's it's whatever I do, um, I don't need to have fun to do it to sort of that it's a very strange way that I went. When I wake up and was say, "Do you, uh, you know, don't you hate waking up at four o'clock in the morning?" I don't really hate it. I don't really love it. I just do it don't because feel anything about it. Yeah. And and uh, that goes a lot with a lot of things that I do. Sometimes I used to be like uh, five, six, seven years ago. I used to get burned out working. I don't anymore for some reason because I just um, I just work. People say you. I don't have it. I don't have a hobby. I don't have any hobbies. Um, I work, um, and I don't know what I don't know what fun is. To be honest with you, I really don't. You know why? Because fun. Do you guys know what was the difference of fun and happiness? Fun is a state of mind. Let's do something. Let's do some fun now. We got a drink, and then we drink, we party, we go out. You know what I mean? And then we get drunk, and then we do this, and we do. That's fun. How long that lasts? How long, how long, how long uh, a fun night lasts? Tell me. Six hours, eight hours, 10 hours. That's a long night. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm exaggerating, okay? But now, you enjoy what you do. I can tell, I come here, I have been on this gym here, 3 a.m. I have worked out at 3 a.m. on this gym. This guy used to test me all the time. All the time. Oh, uh, tomorrow, I, will see, I want to see you at 3 a.m. And uh, he said, okay, and turn around and left. And it's like, I wasn't sure if you heard me correctly. Uh, um, oh, I said 3 a.m. I heard you. And he walked away. So, yeah. It's, it's just because, like I said, you know, like, uh, I enjoy. Like, I enjoy being like this. You know, it's not hard for me. You know, like, don't, like I said, you know, many years I thought about people who have to be like me, to be a champion, and I let this go. I don't think so, you know, I think everybody has their own way. But like, that's fun for me. I like to stay home, I like to work out. I have a gym in my house, I don't go in the gyms no more. I work out in my house, I eat in my house, 
You know what I mean? I go train. <laughs> and then, you know, like, I like to work. I like, you know, like, I travel the world. I doing what I love to do it. You know what I mean? Like, I basically, I used to travel pretty much every single weekend. I'm a, somewhere in the world, you know, like, teaching, training, working out, you know. And then, and then right now, to be honest, it's just, like I said, as things getting back to normal, you know, I don't know when that I'm going back to, you know, feeling more happiness. Right now, no, I'm not happy right now. Not being here, but like in my state of that I'm going through. Oh, I totally understand what you're saying. But uh, it's okay. It's okay. And then, and then what's fun now? Let's, you know, like what's going to give to me be fun right now? Like my wife is like, my birthday is coming up. I want to have a birthday party for you. I don't want to. I don't want to. I have nothing to celebrate right now. You know what I mean? I'll have to oh, celebrate. Sure. You, you know, like uh, it's it's basically she's like, no, you helped again. You've been through a lot. Let's celebrate. I said, you like party. You have your birthday. And then there was no party. You know what I mean? I don't want to. You know what I mean? I'm, I don't want to have people over my house. I don't, you know, like I don't want to go outside, see people. You know, like uh, it's basically I'm locking in something deep, you know, in chains. Oh. You know, like uh, people, it's, it's probably hard for you to understand right now if you're not been through this. And then I feel bad for myself for the times that I judge people. You know, like uh, one thing that I learned on this process that I'm going through is like, don't judge. Don't you're not judge. Better. You're not better no. than anybody else. No, don't judge. Because I'm looking at you guys here, you know, and then I'm trying to feel it, right? What you guys thinking, what you guys going through, uh, you know, like what are you guys gonna do after this? It's nearly impossible. I cannot say nothing about none of you guys. You know what I mean? I can say nothing, not, not one thing. I cannot even say about my wife. You know what I mean? That I know her, I, I'm with her for like over 20 years. And then it's, it's when is deep inside you, you can't judge. One thing that I learned on this process, don't judge. So if I was to take something away from tonight, I would say, I would say one, fear, um, embrace it, right? Embrace it. Embrace the fear. Yeah, um, it's gonna be there always. Everybody fears something. Don't, don't ever, at, yes. At any given time, just don't yeah. try to run away. No. I will say um, fail. You're gonna fail. Fail. It's, it's just part of the process. Just don't quit. Quit is the easy way out. Don't quit. Just keep failing. Yeah, because quit is easy. Yeah. Imagine, imagine if I put you in a submission, like I get you in a rear naked choke. I'm yeah, choking you. Fun, fun. But then you can be breathing a little bit, you know? Like you're like, oh man, that, that's a little bit breathe here, but it's so tough, you know? This guy is more than me. So the easiest thing is to nearly you quit. Tap. You know what I mean? And then, okay, you tap, done. But then, you able to like turn your neck a little bit and then you're breathing. And then you like, then you escape. Then you see the other person and the other person is like, how this happened? This guy escaped nearly to death. And then now he's here on top of me, like a breathing from his nose, not tired, ready to choke me. Because you don't quit. The easy way out to be quit. You know, like, and then anything else, don't you know? Freaking quit, ever, don't. Don't quit. No. Don't quit. Anything but quitting. And the third one, so uh, fail, be afraid, it's good for you. And um, you can do it, right? Discipline, anybody can do it, right? Anybody. It's, it's, it, honestly, you only find, that's my belief. You fucking do it. My belief. <laughs> but, do it. But my belief, guys, just you guys don't get me wrong and think like, this guy is something special. What I believe about discipline, like a fully disciplined, you have to love something. Love. Love. Love, love and love passion. Is it's not love love and passion. You need to be passionate every day. You know what love I mean? Love it. Yes. Love it. That's it. And then if you don't have it, if you don't have it, find it. Find it. Because otherwise you, it will be hard for be like 100% disciplined. Yeah, yeah. I'm not disciplined for everything, but you know. You find something you love it. Yeah. You'll do it. Strength is come, discipline will be there, motivation will be there, everything. All right, so I want to put it to the audience. If anybody wants to ask him a question, anybody uh, want to not? Did I say nine times? World champion? Did I? Did I? You guys know he's a nine times world champion. 
Nine, nine times. <laughs> almost all fingers. Oh, we got a question right there. So you said that the nothing makes you happy now, right? Not happy. Not so right. What's, so what's going to make you happy? What do you think is going to get you back to be happy again? That's a great question. And then a very hard one to answer, but I kind of know. As I, I think as I begin to find myself again on the new me, what's next for my life? You know, I'm on the 40 years old, you know, like uh, I don't want to go back the way that I was when this happened to me. I want to I wanna be better. And then when I find it, I think I'm going to find happiness again. I was so happy with everything. My life was going amazing. You know what I mean? I have beautiful family. You know what I mean? I have accomplished most of the things that I write it out and then, you know, but right now, you know, I have to, your next yeah, chapter. I have to refine, refine myself, you know, find who I am, who true I am, and then I'm going to find happiness again. Oh, well, it's called a middle life crisis. People buy it for vet, uh, <laughs> or convertible. That might help. Try that. <laughs> well, uh, you know, like uh, I, I, Talk about this, about middle life cries, you know, like, uh, you know, and then, it, you know, like, it could be, it could be, you know, like, I don't, you know, like, where am I going? Who am I? Exactly. I don't know, you know, like, I don't know if for me it's the strongest way because, you know, what happened to me, but like, uh, it is, you know, like, uh, I'm, you know, I cannot try to be that guy, you know, like uh, the Superman, training hard, you know, traveling. Imagine, imagine this, okay? I fly to Dubai, okay? Then I land in Dubai. Then my friend picked me up. Hey, homo, let's go to this restaurant, have a dinner. No, 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 man. Find me a sauna or a gym right now, off the plane. 6 a.m., 2 a.m., doesn't matter. I need to sweat it out right now. I'm sitting on this plane and then this is killing me. I need to work out, let's go train, let's do something. I, I don't want to sit in the restaurant and then bless my myself with like salt and food without sweat out and then but now imagine you're doing that like every day for like months it catch up with me and then put me so down you need, you need the, the i need yeah no one i think my daughter wants to go out i do everything for my daughters they want to go out i go out you know but like uh not it's not what i want i want to just finish here Go home, have Norma cook for me, my food, you know. My food is so, ready. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I try to relate to that. It's very hard if you're, <laughs> if you're not a world champion. No. But you have to understand, guys. Um, this is. I told one time, I trained this kid at one point in Zana. Uh, I said to him, um, I want you to take this, this eraser, uh, take this pencil and stick in this eraser. And I want you to stare at that thing for 15 minutes every single day. Clear your desk, stick the pencil to a razor, and I want you to find that pencil the most interesting thing in the world for 15 minutes. And you look at me like, <laughs> what is that? Exactly. Of course you don't understand. And that's why you're never going to be an Olympic champion, because you don't understand things like that. Olympic champions. Find things like that interesting, and um, uh, that's why you're nine, nine times world champion because uh, it's uh, it's it's fascinating that the things that you your life. I think it's like I don't know, it's very difficult for many. Tavi, question. Do you uh, feel like you're ever in a crunch of time? So saying right now, you said you're rediscovering yourself. Do you feel like you're in a crunch of time? Do you feel like anxious? You're do, you feel by time. do you feel pressure? And like, if it is that you feel these things, I understand cold showers one, so that maybe helps you deal with it. Do you have any other systems in place? What are you doing with your day right now? Like, how's your day looking? You, Great in question. Of, like, in this part of like recovery and rediscovering yourself, how is your day looking like? That's a, that's a great question, you know, and then I think this question can help people also know that at some point you're going to need help, right? Is a, you know, like uh, I have anxiety, I have depression, right? On these uh, past uh, few months, uh, I experiment anxiety, depression, panic attacks, you know, 
everything relate to the mind, right? And then, uh, well, I have to go dig deep, you know? Obviously, uh, my wife, I don't like medication, you know? I try medication and then almost it put me in a, in a, in a dark, dark place, you know? So then my wife convinced me to have a therapist and then she began to give me techniques because I don't want to only talk, but I want techniques. I want to understand the brain. I want to understand what can I do it. And then, you know, like I begin to like focus, like I begin to read a lot, you know, like read it to truly understand, not to just read and go through the book, but like read deep, get deep into the words and then understand what they want to tell you that book, you know. I did that. The cold shower, it helped me tremendous, you know, like it's something that um, you wake up, you don't want to do it, but it's a dose of dopamine. You know, like it's all the hormones that there was messing on my body by being put in a bed and stay there. They have to be regained, right? So read breathing, you know, like uh, countless breathe sessions a day, you know, like like Wind Hof, I did Wind Hof, you know, um, I did that for like probably like four months straight. Then I learned a new technique with my therapist, you know, like which is like 50 minutes. It's like a medicine many times a day, you know, like when I begin to feel anxious, I go to my office, I sit on my chair, you know, put the headphone and then I breathe, you know, like that helped me a lot too. And then work out, you know what I mean? Like work out. When I begin to increase my workout, like, like increase like uh, how hard it was, it begin to help me even more. Like work out, don't look on the phone, just work out, you just, just go. You know, like, and one last thing, enjoy my daughters on the foolish. Sit down, get my phone, put it down, look on the fingers. By the way, nobody's saying this, so I'm sorry to other people. This is jujitsu fingers. Yeah. I can watch the fingers, all knuckles. Like, <laughs> but like, sit with them, you know, like, feel the hair, you know, like, watch. Simple Yeah, watch her fingers, pay attention to the details. On her, on her toes, you know what I mean? Like look them straight in the eyes. Yeah, that's the things, those things that uh, when I'm like anxious, anxiety. And then, you know, like the craziest thing is my older daughter, she sends a lot when I'm going through, you know, and she keep looking at me and then I know, you know, and then I begin like look her eyes to eyes. And yeah, then, I know when you're, not, when you're not present. Yeah, so then, you know, that's helped me a lot because I don't know if you guys know when you go in through depression, panic attacks, um, anxiety, you're not there. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's a feeling that I never thought that I would experience in my life because I'm the toughest one in the world, right? Nine times world champion, no. You know? And then you feel even more than probably someone that has not this toughest mindset. And then, uh, those things help me a lot, you know, like, and then, uh, yeah, I can talk so much deep about this and then, uh, but you just, you just got to do things that you don't want to do it because bottom line, I don't really want to do none of that. Would you say with the discipline that got that thing to happen in your life, that made you think, see things from other perspective, or was just nature and it just happened, the, like, the, the thing that happened? I think nature. I don't. I don't think I can't. It could. It could. Yes. No. Definitely is. Yeah. Definitely. You know, like because, you know, like uh, I have like a Chinese doctor. You know, and then you know, like and then I ask all the doctors, why this happened to me? Do I have something else? You know, like is anything else happened to me? And then you know, obviously I have a post-traumatic. Also, one more thing, post-traumatic syndrome. I don't know whatever they cause. Yeah, that you like, basically, you think you're sick. I have this, I have that, you know, like, it's, you know, like, I went deep waters, you know, like, <laughs> it was, I swim deep, you know, like at the bottom of the ocean. And then, uh, you know, like, uh, my doctor is the first one they told me, Homolo, it's years of years of going over your limit every single day. It catch up to you. Yeah, it did. You know, like, uh, being so disciplined, Man, I, I didn't even care about sleeping at some point. Like, I don't, sleep? Why did I need sleep? You know, like sleep. 
I would sleep three hours a night. Just a loser. Yeah, exactly. And then now I'm like, man, let me get my eight hours of sleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, now, now I'm sleeping. Now I'm resting. And then I just did this gen gen genetic test. And then the generic test, I have a mutation that's like, you can't overtrain it. And I've been overtraining my whole life. You know what I mean? It says it all. So I put my body, I put uh, myself in a, in, a, in a lot of pressure, like mentally and physically over the years. And then that is, that is, it got me that. I remember telling you, you stopped you trained too hard. Man, you know, like, it's crazy because, you know, like Liu told about this story, you know, and then that is, uh, that's crazy because I went to a tournament in Abu Dhabi, then I hurt my hamstring. Right. And then I came back limping like, I, you know, like a five of like a five doctors said surgeon and then I want to walk out. Right. And then Leo was like, man, you can't you can't you can't not even do push ups. He sent me home 10 days. I don't know if he's remember that. And then I came back and he sent me home again, 15 more days. And then at some point, I believe you or my physical therapist convinced me like you're not going to train. You're going to win without training. Because there was a world. That's the only thing you needed, rest. Yeah, there was a world championship coming up, and then uh, if I won that world in 2013, I'm gonna be inducted to the Hall of Fame of Jiu Jitsu, and then I did want to win that, and then I have a hamstring. Like five doctors told me I need surgery, and Leo told me to rest. My physical therapist told me to rest. I'll just for like I'll come here. I'll do some arm stuff with Leo. I don't know if you remember that, but no train Jiu Jitsu at all. And then physical therapy with my with my physical therapist. And then uh, one week before there was, I asked him, "Can I train?" And he's like, "You're gonna train two rounds, okay? Get the best guy in the gym, and then call them to go in the gym in a separate time, and you're gonna compete against them. The time of your match. I call the best guy, the best two guys, which is both of them was a world champion on that year as well. And then without training for two months, I smashed them." I didn't feel anything in my leg. I felt like, like imagine like you feel like a rock, like this iron. I felt like so strong, so rested. And then I went there and I won. Easy. World champion again. Without training. Don't, <laughs> you, you see, don't <laughs> He's like, stop. You guys keep training. Don't start. Don't, don't listen to him. Um, anybody else? Uh, one more. Yeah. So, so going back to your overtraining. Obviously, I was telling the same thing. It's driving me nuts with that too, and I completely understand where not pushing my body to the limits feels weird. Like I feel it depresses me not <laughs> to work that hard. Like I work out, I need to fucking do it. Otherwise, what is the point? So, for you, obviously the trick you had becoming the champion and everything else was meant to be this. We cannot look back to it with regret, you know, or any or that sort. Yeah, any regrets? Yeah. But if you would have any regrets, what are those regrets? One, and then two, would you be doing anything different knowing what you know now? Man, you have good questions. <laughs> I like that. I can't remember what you're saying. I'm like, obviously, a few steps ahead, a large steps ahead. And if I can learn and apply by any means of life. <laughs> yes, they want to. Well, I read your notes. You don't even know. <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy, but I don't. I don't have regrets. If I go back in time, I probably push a little harder. You know what I mean? Because, like you said, when I go in the gym. And then I don't work hard. It's it it doesn't feel anything for me. It's it's a waste of my time. And then uh, I know that now it has to be changed. You know, it's time to change. But I don't care that happened. I'm alive, and then that's my sense. That's who I am. And I think that's what makes you who you are. Exactly. You know, like uh, relentless work. You know what I mean? Like uh, that's a uh, it's something that I cannot take away from me, and I won't regret, you know. I'll do the same. But if you look back into this, you definitely see that there are those questions. things that you could have done better. What are those things that you could have done better? Like, the, like what would you do different? Like, you would maybe be nice way. to my wife, you know? <laughs> <laughs> maybe be nice to my wife, you know? Yeah, be nice, you know, like, be more like... Uh, Actually, I have that question. I was wondering how your wife... <laughs> 
I think. Janaina's next seminar will have her here. Next hour, we have her. You have your why, which is like the foundation. Like, yep. If, you have, if anything, I feel like if you do fall from the mountain, like, you have to go back to your basics, which is like the simple things, like your wife. Yeah, your kids. you know what? She's. You know, like she's a. Uh, well, she's basically what they hold me, you know what I mean, when I fall, you know, like uh, that's, that's how it is, you know, like uh, if she was fall, I'm going to be the one to hold her, you know what I mean, so I fall, she was there, and then uh, she took care of everything, you know what I mean, like uh, she showed her strength, sometimes so he gave her an opportunity to be strong. She, you know, like, uh, to be honest with you, she's like, uh, basically, high strength. You know, like, you know, the three strength only happen on the bad times. Be strong, like, when everything is good, is the easiest thing in the world. Be strong when your world drop on top of you. 100%. Is what the real strength. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's yeah, like giving a prize when they're in a picture of the corona in their, in their hands saying, oh, life does it, give you life advice. Be positive when you're hurt and broken and down. That's your challenge. Exactly. And then, you know, like, uh, like I said, you know, uh, she knows what I'm going through. And then I'm trying my best to regain the happiness. It should be the person who I was, you know, the person that wake up, put the music, you know, like Bob Marley, you know, when I wake up, go my, do my breakfast, do food for everybody, you know, little by little, You'll get there. you know, I'm coming back and then, uh, you know, I don't want to be, I'm a positive person, you know, I like to walk in a place and then be, you know, like just be a light, you know what I mean? I, I, I love that, you know, and then, um, that's coming back eventually, but uh, yeah, she's uh, she hold the world on her own, you know. <laughs> she knows. We got one more from Peter. All right, all right. Let's do this. Yeah, one more. Go ahead. Uh, from Hungary. So you said you like reading now a lot. I just wanted to ask, like, do you have any recommendation? What you read? Is it related to uh, what happened to you? Uh, or is it just a completely different subject, what you read about generally? Um, yeah, I've been reading some things related to happen, you know, like um, usually the ones that I read, it's like what happened right now because the deep I read in Portuguese, I don't know the name in English. But uh, I'm also read, uh, I like to read business books, you know, like uh, I like to read, um, you know, like uh, kind of like inspired stories. I like, uh, you know, I just read the, the new book from David Goggins. You know, you guys think me crazy, you guys should read that book. <laughs> He's insane. Yeah, uh, the new one, the new one, Never Finish It. Very good book, you know. Um, you know, like, uh, but uh, I like, uh, you know, like when you read those type of books, you know, like uh, to be honest, you get to know that, uh, you know, like the similarity of a lot of things. You know, but like, uh, I, you know, I'm more interested now to actually, um, you know, read the, like the things that happened to me. Yeah. You know, like about, um, you know, that's a, a great Brazilian book that I just got it. Took a while to get here. That is about environment, you know, like from the world. It's this uh, very famous Brazilian, um, uh, you know, doctor. And then I'm going to begin to read that one. Yeah, I, I'm trying my best to understand, you know, like, uh, understand about leaf and that, you know, like, um, yeah, I want to understand like, uh, what's that? What is, what is, what it is, you know, what is to be scared about it, you know, something that is natural, you know, like, uh, it's, it's, I'm going through me a lot, it's been a while, you know, like, uh, last year I lost my mother, this year, no, last a year before I lost my mother, then I, I got ultra focus, you know, like, uh, I got even more into like uh, doing stuff, you know. I don't want to like have like one minute of my time to have a chance to think about lose my mother, not making time to say bye. You know, like I was going to go see her like uh, five days before she passed away. In Brazil, when you pass away, they just, it's done, you know, like they don't wait. 
I tried to make my sister wait. They don't want to do it. So I got there and my mom is not home, you know. So then I made myself really busy and then made a lot of things happen. So I made some, so much things happen in one year, but like ultra focused to not really have a chance to thinking about losing my mother and not being there to support my family. And then this year happened is, you know, like, well, it's, it's, I want to know, you know, like I, I want to go deep and then understand more relate of what's happened now. What's that? What's, what's, what is this? What is about that? You know? Thank you. One more. My daughter wants to ask you a question. Um, I actually have two questions, but uh, when did you start doing it? Like when did you start doing jujitsu? Well, I started doing jujitsu. That was a great question. I started doing jujitsu. My first uh, time that I was introduced to jujitsu, I was eight years old. I was already doing like uh, taekwondo, another martial arts, and then my taekwondo master, he ended up to be a jujitsu master too. And then uh, you know, I, w I didn't got much interest in, but eventually, I actually got my black belt in taekwondo before jujitsu. But I believe like when I got really into, I was like 15 years old. I'm like, I want to do this for a living, you know? So, but my first time, it was eight years old. And the second question? Uh, my second question is, why did you like wanted to start doing it? Like, what was the um, I think, uh, you know, like I was a very, very active kid, you know, like I had a lot of energy. You're very skinny, you just want to get stronger, that's <laughs> As well. And then, you know, like, uh, and then one day, you know, like I figured out that I would be an athlete. I figured out that God blessed me with things that uh, ability, like athletic ability. I believe that when I was going to play soccer, I end up being better than people before they were better than me. Sometimes they'll be better than me in the beginning and then I just become better than them. And then that happened to all the sports, you know, like uh, when you're talking about conditioning, like... Uh, I'll do conditioning with people and then they get tied away before me. And then I begin to see that and then I took advantage of like uh, what... Uh, I think I can be good at this yep. thing, huh? Yeah, so I'm like, uh, don't like this so much. You know, I didn't like to follow the world path, which is like, go do this, this, and I try to do something different, something that uh, through love. You know, I think uh, I definitely think that I was blessed with uh, athleticism, and then I take I took advantage of that. Let's give it up for Omar Barra. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys. Thanks, Coach Liu. You know, like I appreciate. Uh, I have like we're going back, back. You know, and then. Uh, like I said, you know, coach, for me, I met him in a point of my life that uh, I was close to stop competing, you know, like uh, I want to make change. And then, uh, you know, like I met Leo through like uh, uh, mutual friends, a manager, MMA manager that he used to manage some guys that I used to train. And then I come here first, you know, like uh, and then uh, thought that I was in good shape, you know, and then Leo. Yeah. Yeah, he broke me like a, just like a two minutes on the rope, you know. And then, you know, like, and then back then, you know, like, uh, I was like, well, wait a minute, how this happened? And Liu, he taught me probably one of the best things on uh, my athlete career. And I'm not saying that because he's here, but it's the truth. He taught me how to lock in. Lock in. Like a lock in, lock in, it's basically like, okay, 10 minutes, get, in the zone. get on the zone, 10 minutes planked. Because I was younger and then I was going to the tournament and then I would just react fast, explosive, you know. So then I begin to understand. So when I came here, like in six months, outcome workout, and then we nearly locked one hour in workout nonstop. Like, not when not means lock in, you come in and when you start, you don't stop. Yeah, for like one hour, it's like it, it was like a basic like a run a marathon when I used to work out with him. And then uh, that is not all the way to finish the workout if it was not fully commitment. So basically, when I was here, I was 100 percent present, you know, like I just every I used to I was addicted. I want to do more like can we do five times, you know, because it made me come here 
lock in for one hour and then be on the flow stage. I don't know if you guys ever be in a flow stage in your life and something, you know, like a being like 100% present, present of like for one hour doing something. And then I learned that and then I implement that in my meds. We, we have a great, after Liu, after I began to work out with Liu, I was having a great career and then I was actually going down. And then I met Liu and then I, I went, Five more world championships. Yeah. So then I won pretty much everything again many times, you know. And then what I believe that was different, probably you guys experienced that with Liu, he make you believe, you know. Like he said that I have a gift, but I think he have a, a better gift than mine, which is he's doing on his daily basis. That's why it's not hard for him to wake up 4 a.m., 3 a.m. It's, it's only a gift if you give it. Remember exactly. Wow, if you don't good. give it, it's, it's, it's not going exactly. to be a gift. Yep. And then he's, you know, he's doing that, changed people's life, you know, for many years on this facility here. And then, like I said, he believes you can do it. You know, like... Yeah, uh, he does. Too. He believes. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, like, you know, you know that uh, what you came about, you know, like, and then... Um, Keep doing what you're doing, you know. It was my pleasure to come here. And then I've been planning for many, for many, you know, for a couple of times, you know, like uh, I told Leo, I say, Leo, I'm ready. I don't know about English, but he said, man, they will understand you, you know. You don't need to, uh, yeah, you just be here. Uh, I love it. I love it, as you know. All right, guys. All Thank you, guys. Well. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for coming. <laughs> That's great. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you.